taken care of. And it was. And uh, right. that that's that's proof right there. Right. That was my first really big uh, to me at the time. Later on, I, I uh, did that again with, um, uh, got two six-figure windfalls in a three-month period. And that was on the heels, and this was even after that. Remember I told you, you know, that wasn't like the end of it, and all of a sudden I'm cured. I let my consciousness go again. Another time we ended up fifty. Fifty thousand dollars <laughs> in credit in a card debt, and I had already been working, if you can believe this, on how to attract money using my power for eight years. Uh-huh. And so here I am working on a book called How to Attract Money Using My Power for eight years, and we're fifty thousand dollars in credit card debt. But I went out on complete faith. We moved between states. We had lived over in uh, Hawaii, and you know, did things we wanted to do, and. So it, it was all part of the mix, but uh, at the time I was working a low-paying job again, and uh, I quit my job and locked myself up in my attic room. I had an attic room, literally, that had only one window down at one end of it, and because there was another small room up there, and that had the other only window. And uh, it did have an air conditioner in the wall, uh, thank God, or I couldn't have survived up there. But I had I didn't even know how to type yet. Uh, I was just uh, had never been on a computer yet or anything. And I quit my job. I went into silence for the first ten days, and I and I just started really really working the principles and working on the book. And within three months, we had two six figure windfalls come into the house, completely debt free from the fifty thousand dollars in credit card debt. And what I like to point out to people is the fifty thousand in credit card debt as a household was the lowest we had ever been. And to date, the two six figure windfalls within the three month period of quitting my job are, is the is the greatest um, you know. Um, miracle my money miracle manifestation in a short time with the two six figure windfalls but it came on the heels of the lowest financial point and oftentimes it works like that because oh, yeah. i had to become extremely motivated and have a lot of faith if you can imagine to actually quit the only job that the household had and to go out on complete faith and then within a year or so uh then i published my book and but I, but it was what i did was the act as if basically I, you know, I wanted to be a metaphysical author and writer, and I realized that writers don't drive across town on a bicycle to take care of a developmentally disabled man and give up all the their time and energy each week to where they have no time left to write. A writer writes. Right. And so that's what I did. I turned my back on everything else. I mean, literally. I, I didn't even shave or... or uh, cut my hair again for years after that. I didn't talk on the phone for an entire year, and I wasn't um, on. I wasn't in uh, um, on the internet, so I couldn't do any uh, emails with my family or anything. And so it was snail mail. And I'm talking about mother, father, you know, sister. But I, I had to really, really dig in, and I had to do what I had to do. It was a turning point in my life. And and so I've never had to look back from that, but that that was one of the major. And you mentioned the the ten thousand that was big, but even before that, there was many little things that led up to that. Um, and then since that that uh, fifty thousand dollar thing, which was about ten years ago or so, there's been other amazing things that have happened. And so it all goes in there to reinforce. But now you know my my downs are what. Used to, I would have looked at as ups in the past. I remember years ago uh, hearing the concept somewhere that you want to get your life financially and otherwise to where your downs are like other people's ups, you know? Right. And that's that's where I am now. And my downs are like in the past, uh, they would have been ups that were so high I couldn't even imagine, <laughs> you know, being there. You know, and I and I told my, my household, I said, I'm quitting my job, well, I, and I couldn't tell them verbally because I, I had to write notes because I went into silence when I had this epiphany or whatever you want to call it, and I immediately started writing notes. Oh, wow. Uh-oh. Oh. Gee, oh, oh, I wonder what's going on here. Uh, maybe we lost the connection. Are you still there? Yes, 
Uh, uh, yep. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. The, 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 either the phone or something dropped out for a while or, or, or something. Oh, okay. We're back. And uh, Okay, great. But I, I told them that I'm claiming my independence. I am never going to work another job for the rest of my life. And this was someone who is in a very low-paying uh, field. $50,000 as a household and credit card debt, making this proclamation that I will never, ever work another job. I'm going to be a metaphysical slash self-help author, and I'm going to do that come hell or high water. If the universe wants me to do this, which I think it's why I'm here, then they're going to have to figure out the financial end of it <laughs> to help me to do it. And that's exactly what happened. So, oh, wow. But, it, you know, you, you look in the book here and it's all there. You know, the speaking as if and the, the belief and the expectancy, the acting as if. Because if I had all the money I wanted, well, would I have kept that job? No, I acted as if I already had the money. I acted as if I was already uh, a successful author. Because in my mind, what does a successful author do? They stay home and they write books. That's what they do. That's, they stay home and they write. And so I I applied you know, when I did the 10,000 credit card debt, I used one basic technique. When I, when I did the 50,000 to the, to the six figure, uh, two six figure windfalls, I was doing everything because I was working on the book every day. I was arranging my quotes at the time and different things. And I was just doing it all. I was, I was applying everything I was uh, writing about. And it's very powerful if you do it. People just have to really believe that they have this power. It's not anything that's special to me or to Arnold Schwarzenegger or anyone else. It's available to everyone. If you're, if you're a sane person, if you can understand the concepts as we're discussing them here, then you can learn basic, simple, metaphysical slash mind power techniques. You can put them into practice. You can stick to it. You can, you know, ha have persistence. See, the mindset is really it's not about I'll try this for a month or I'll try this for a year or I'll try this for 10 years or even I'll try this for 20 years and if it doesn't work, I'll quit. It's I am going to do X. You know, I am going to be financially uh, independent, let's say. I am going to not have to leave my house anymore. It's always my dream to not have to go out of my house. I literally have stayed home on my own property for months at a time. You know, I'm, I'm kind of a recluse at this time in my life. I enjoy my my time uh, to think and to write and to get into different kinds of spiritual mindsets. Um, but you need to decide what that is and basically do it. Whatever it is for the individual, they need to claim it and they need to start living it. The life that's the most amazing thing is that the life you want is already here. It's, it's as close as the hair on your head. You can reach out and touch it if you just believe it. If you just have that faith or if you just dig in and really get that, that uh, desire and, and just then you're going to go out and you're going to find the $20 that you need <laughs> for your rent. Yeah. And, and then you're, then you're going to feel even better. And then you're going to feel more hopeful, and one thing's going to lead to another. And within a day, a week, a month, uh, you can be living a completely different life yeah. than you're living right now. But you, it's the change starts in your mind. It doesn't start on the outside. It starts on the inside. You know, when I in my younger days, and yeah, much younger days, I, there was times that me and my wife, when because we have eight eight children or had eight children. There was times I sat there in my early career uh, days, not, how can I say it, not having enough money myself even to pay the bills, you know, and I would panic. And then my wife would say, you know, what good does it do to stress over it? You're going to have a heart attack. Don't worry about it. So, you know, I listened to her sometimes, but then all of a sudden, like a week later, all of a sudden we get this refund for something or we we get a check in the mail from something or and it was strange and it always came at the right time and it was always when i wasn't panicking and you know it's just like 
it happened. Right. It's it's the releasing, and that's why things like expectancy and acting as if, thinking as if, thinking and feeling as if, speaking as if, are so important because they set the stage, and they they it, it all of this speaks to a person. Uh, who is not stressed and who is relaxed. And we find it's like when I quit my my job um, and I just let go, I just released, I just said, that's it. I'm going to lock myself away. I'm going to write. This is what I do. Everything else is going to work out. And I let go of the stress. I let go of the fear. I I expected things to work out. And it's a whole different uh, mindset, and in that release, we open the way for things to then start um, flowing to us. Because usually, for the average person, where we are our own worst enemies, we're tugging and fighting and pushing and pulling against the universal flow. And if we would just understand that that's what's keeping things like they are, less than what you know optimal. Um, once we understand that and we do let go, we do release it, we do stop worrying, we, we do get the stress out of the way, then things just magically start unfolding in ways that we never could have imagined. And many times it's like these possibilities were there all along. But you didn't you see know? them because you were so but stressed you didn't out. See them. Yeah, you were stressed right. out or you, you just weren't, you know, yeah. How can I say it? If you're going to think you're going to be poor the rest of your life, you're going to be poor the rest of your life. If you uh, uh, never are going to have a job you want uh, and you complain about your job, and it, that's what's going to happen to you the rest of your life. And what right. you're, you're saying does make a lot of sense if you really think about it. You know, I was, I'll be honest right. with you. When I first started talking to you, I, I was really skeptical. But, you know, a lot of things you said is a lot of things that's happened in my life. And it, right. it, it does make sense. You, you make your life by your, you, by, how can I say it? By your wants and desires and, and being open. If you're negative about stuff, it's not going to happen. As simple as that. Right. Right. It's, it's, we, we, we really find, you know, the old saying, seek and, uh, seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. It's kind of what we, we look for. There's an actual physical part of the brain I've heard talked about that they call the reticular activating system, I believe. Uh -huh. I'm saying that correctly. And you know when you uh, – I remember because when I was uh, – my first car was a 1965 um, Austin Healey um, <laughs> Sprite. Okay. And which is basically an MG Midget. I mean, it's just a different label. It's the same exact car. The Austin, the, the uh, was it Austin Healey uh, Sprite? Yeah. Um, was the same car as the MG Midget. Uh -huh. And, but when I bought that car, all of a sudden, I started seeing MG Midgets and Triumph Spitfires and all these um, really, really small cars. And I was amazed because I thought, well, geez, I never saw all these small cars. What what happened? Did everybody all of a sudden start buying small cars? You know, tiny little, I don't know if you know what the MG Midget is. Oh, yeah. I, these I, are I, tiny yeah. little four-cylinder. And um, Barely, uh, if you were fat, you couldn't get in one, I can tell you that. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. And so, but with the point is that, that the reticular activating system in my brain apparently got, it's like they say, when you buy a Corvette, all of a sudden you notice all these Corvettes everywhere. Oh, yeah. Because you, you've been activated to that. Well, that's the same thing. When you, when you loosen up like we've been talking about, when you come to expect better and uh, have prosperous thoughts, your reticular activating system will, will spot, um, the, you know, the MG Midgets. In other words, it'll spot the opportunities for you to, to make money or to be more prosperous or to make a certain business connection. It's, all, it's in our environment all the time. Possibility and, and uh, probability, you know, possibility and um, uh, just these things that uh, there's a word I'm looking for, uh, opportunities. Possibilities, opportunities, they're always there, but most people don't see them or don't see them for what they are. But when you activate a certain part of your physical brain even, I mean, a lot of this is mind.